Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bone Dive. On today's episode, I'm extremely super duper extra excited to introduce you to the one and only Jack Weichel. If there's one thing that's been pretty clear to me, it's that the Bonsai family is like no other family I've been a part of, and it's given me the chance to meet uh, an incredible array of people. Uh, I've said it before and most recently on my 3,000 subscriber thank you video episode, um, a ton of thank yous to everybody out there who have supported me and continue to just work together and learn and teach and just to have a blast talking about something we all are so passionate about. And this next gentleman has been passionate for a very long, long time. Jack Weichel turned 90 this past summer in July, and the Michigan bonsai scene put together this amazing auction in support of Jack and his legacy. We'll learn about that in the video. So this is part one in a two-part series, and uh, if you have a chance to go to Michigan, there is a lot to see. So I'll put all kinds of links down into the uh, uh, description of this video, but we've got the Frederick Meyer uh, Botanical Gardens you can check out in Grand Rapids. You can go to Tipton, Michigan, where Jack Weichel uh, is uh, closely monitoring. He uh, was the former curator over there at Hidden Lake Gardens in Tipton, and his collection is also at the Mathai Botanical Gardens. So, and that's part of the University of Michigan program. So there's just so much bonsai in Michigan. And Jack Weichel has been the grandmaster. He's the longest active member of the Ann Arbor uh, Bonsai Society and has a lot to say. He's humble, he's direct, he's a, he's a go-getter in bonsai uh, and yet quiet and funny. And uh, well, let's get right to the interview. There's so much to hear here. So this is part one of a two-part series and Jack kicks us off with his modesty. Incidentally, if you want to listen to this whole entire interview start to finish, check out my Up North podcast, which can be found on my website, bonsaiacres.com, or a Acast podcast will have it as well. What enamored me from the get-go when I sat down with Jack is he's 90 years old, he's been in bonsai for uh, over 60 years, and he had a pencil and a pad, and he was going to take notes on our discussion. He actually asked me first, before I could get started, hey, Dave, what book would you recommend as a beginner book? Um, now that laid the groundwork for the first part of this interview for sure, but he actually asked my opinion on Bonsai and the book that I might recommend. So I told him the Little Book of, bon Little book of Bonsai from Jonas Dupuy. Uh, and then he proceeded to give me some knowledge that he and some of his Bonsai friends have uh, put out in print. So let's go visit Jack Weichel at Hidden Lake Gardens on this part one of a two-part series on Dave's Bonsai. Enjoy. So this, you know, I don't, I don't know if this is good or not because I wrote it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think it's going to be great then. <laughs> they, they, this was my effort to uh, do a, a basic a thing. A basic it's intro book. Yeah, well, not a, not a, probably a less short of a book. You know. <laughs> pamphlet. Uh, a pamphlet. There you a, go. A, a handout. There you go. A handout. A, a, you know, that you could use. And, and this is sort of, in approaching this, my think, okay, you know, here's the guy, and it's not all that uncommon. You know, I'm really interested in this bonsai thing, and uh, uh, I've got uh, 15 minutes. Tell me, tell me everything that I need to know to do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of hard to do, read, Jack. Read, 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 this. read this. You know what I love? I read an article uh, uh, that you were a part of, wrote, maybe you were part of the whole thing, and I, it's in my phone somewhere, but here's the gist of what this article started with, and you talked about... Um, certain care for trees and water and misting and this and that, and then you said like afterwards that you didn't follow any of that. Yeah, and, and that was specifically, that the text that you're talking about was yeah. specifically related to growing things in, indoors. indoors under artificial light. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and all, all of those instructions yeah. are out there. Yeah. And I haven't, didn't... You didn't do any of them. Didn't find I needed to... I tried them, yeah. you know, so... One of you know, if I had any message to people getting started in the bonsai world, yeah. it would just be aware that a lot of what we know about bonsai isn't true. <laughs> yeah. And, and when what the visiting artist and the, and the books, yeah. uh, you know, uh, tell you, and what the trees are telling you, seem to disagree. Listen to the trees. Listen to the tree. The tree will tell you. You know, they'll you know, 
and you, yeah. you you learn a lot just by growing something. Sure. You know, there's sure. a certain personality that, uh, okay, they want to master it by reading before they try it. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then there's another personality at the other end of the scale. They, they'll do it, and if it doesn't work, well, maybe I need to know something more. You know? Yeah, right. then, 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 right. then they might read something. Yeah. Of course, my point for a long time is anybody getting started, do some reading, yeah. and, and, but get some plants and experiment, Sure. and you're going to make progress faster than if you yeah. Then you do either one alone. Yeah, so in our workshops with the Minnesota Bonsai mm -hmm. Society, a lot of the young people who come in will say, well, should I get more trees? Because they get one tree from us. We kind of make a bonsai on the quick, right? Which right, we know right, is right, not right. the way you're supposed to do it. But what would you tell people? That one tree and learn about it, or should they get three or four trees? You know, i tell you what I tell them is, get as many as you're comfortable with right away. You have more to learn from, more to experiment. You yeah. can be more experimental. Sure, sure. You know? And if one dies, yeah, it's not a hundred percent lost. <laughs> you, right. you, you, know. you have ten trees, you yeah. only lost ten percent. Right, right, right. You yeah. can do the math there, but You're right. uh, you don't have too much invested in mm -hmm. uh, monetarily and emotionally. Sure. So you're experimenting. Yeah. Just yeah. see what you can do, and mm -hmm. okay, this may not work, uh, but I. Just see what happens. Yeah, you know? yeah. And that kind of attention, so you sure. take you a long way. In all your years that you've been doing this, is there something that stands out as like the biggest mistake people make? You know, water, water and soil mixes are big issues. That, those are still the two big ones. Yeah, and, and hands down. Yeah, I, and and un, unfortunately, there's not one answer. You know, yeah. to any, any of that, but uh, there's some. Answers that are a lot better than others. <laughs> I I'm, I do believe in in lifelong learning, and so I do, I just don't think there's there's no cutoff phase ever, and yeah, yeah, the yeah. tree's never done until, of course, it's in the tree graveyard. But you know, we we learn from them, and I'm gonna learn from you, and I'm gonna learn from this. There's a, there was a kid who was eight years old in a workshop, and I picked something up from what he saw. So I'm gonna carry on here for a couple steps farther. You go for it. You've got the knowledge and the history and I just want to learn it all. You know, if I'm thinking about this, okay, this guy's going to come to talk with me. And, and I, I, I looked at some of your early videos yeah. and uh, uh, get an idea of what you're doing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what is it, you know, asking myself, yeah. that I would say yeah. that somebody, most people haven't heard many times. Okay. You know, and... Yeah. Uh, and then I, I remembered that I had, you know, I've written a lot of articles. At, at one point, after, you know, writing quite a bit of stuff, I was kind of like, well, what, what is it that I've been trying to say mm -hmm. that's, uh, I see it's kind of uh, underpublicized uh, insight. Sure. Not talked about enough. Uh, not talked about enough in my mind. Yeah. And uh, so, okay, start making a list, and, uh, <laughs> and and this was the article this that grew what, out of that. That's what came from that. So these are, and you might want to take a quick glance through that. Absolutely, sometime. yeah. Well, we just covered a couple of those things right now. Yeah. We, Don't limit yourself to one tree. Yeah. Read and experiment. I love this one. Bonsai celebrates the beauty of life and the beauty of trees. What, tell me, what does that sentence mean, Jack? It goes beyond that. It celebrates the beauty of interaction between people and nature, between people and trees. Absolutely. And, it, and that's what this is the, all, the all bones about. Like, the it, bones like community. Of interaction. A absolutely. And like I use you know, the this, words... This, this level, you know, my, my whatever I do with this tree, yeah. when your back's turned, you know, day-to-day yeah. -day attention, the whole cycle of all that. Yeah, yeah. Be patient, but not too patient. You know, there, there's balance in there. Yeah, you know exactly. This is a huge issue for a lot of people. There, there, there's the ones that roar in, you know, and tear it all apart, and then okay, what well, are they going to do with the pieces? You know, and then there's the others that, the ones that want to master it before they do it. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what to do yet. Yeah. You know. We you see know, that at the I, workshops I, I, all the time. All, all the time. It's because yeah. you know it's genetics, human nature. Yeah. But I'm defining true bonsai differently. I want to hear that. You know, um, 
I remember spending uh, with you know, really positive memories of yeah. spending some time with a guy named Stanley Chen who had been raised by uncles in uh, China okay. who were professional bonsai growers. Okay. He was teaching you know, bonsai in the, or penjing, if you will, in, yeah. the, in the Chinese community. Yeah. I went to him with uh, some questions and, uh -huh. and he didn't want to listen to my questions. He wanted, if you're going to teach bonsai, you have to know the basics first. Yeah. And, and so it's kind of like me taking over your presentation here. Sure, sure. He, and but one of the basics for him is that to be called a bonsai, it had to meet a certain set of standards. Yeah. You know, that, that there had a certain relationship between the trunk size and the pot and the pot depth and the tree height and, right. and, and all that. And yeah. that it spelled out very, yeah. you can't call that a bonsai, you know, that, that's, that's his, uh, that was kind of his attitude. Sure, sure. Now, personally, I'm at the other end of the scale. Sure. You know, if somebody bought something from the cheese catalog or mm -hmm. or aunt gave it to them. Yeah. And it's a tree. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, a representation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A living representation of a tree. Yeah. In a container. In a container. And it's you're finding it rewarding for right. anyone to to yeah. you know you you to work with it and uh, some people other people to see it. Yeah. That, 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 that's bonsai. That's bonsai. That's a bonsai. It's a portable yeah. tree, you know. Sure. And, and it's an artistic statement. Here. Yeah. A lot of the club members and I talk about porch lacaria afros, the tropical succulent. Yeah. Okay. That's not a bonsai, people say. Well, you know, they make, they, you know, they can make very compelling trees. Very. You know, Stanley Chin wouldn't accept it in any. Right. But right. In right. My, my mind, you yeah. know, if it's making a statement that's positive for yeah. other people, and, and, and it's. Representation of a tree, You're right, and alive. Yes, you know, yeah. and, uh, in that pot. And, and and if it's not alive anymore, I've I've sold some, some ones that weren't alive anymore. Yeah, because people liked it. it Could, would you sell me that? It's a piece of and, art. Yeah, and, and, and so we, I'm calling that non-living bonsai art. After hearing about how Jack defines bonsai, we shifted a bit and talked about the auction of all of his trees, pots, books, and other bonsai-related items. The Michigan bonsai scene put together this amazing online and live auction and raised over $40,000 to keep his legacy going a long, long time. Here's his take on these legacy funds. Then we jump into the apple tree he chose to have on set with us while we talked. So you reached a lot of people. A lot of people have your stuff now. You raised a lot of money for the legacy. What do you, Jack, what, what do you hope happens next? Like what's next for this legacy? The way this is set up, that this will go on forever. Yeah. You know, unless support the whole world blows Support up. for Bones Eye yeah, yeah, for eternity. At, at, at Hidden Light Gardens. Right here. And if, uh, if Hidden Light Gardens some way decides that, okay, uh, you know, we, we've got other priorities, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we don't need to be doing this, uh, they're doing that in other places, uh, then the money goes to other bonsai causes. Okay. You know? okay. So, so in order to keep that coming, yeah. you, you, you follow my yeah, <laughs> line, absolutely. Of, line of thinking. For sure. And so that's my, I'm not naive enough to think that, oh, when I leave, you know, we've got a good start here. Things are going to go on like they have. They won't. Mm -hmm. We're different people. Right. And yeah. I've realized for some time that I, all of us can accomplish far more helping other people mm -hmm. um, follow their vision sure. than, than trying to impose our own. Sure. You know? Yeah. And so it's going to be different, but it'll be a lot more than if they didn't have any funding. Right. <laughs> the funding does help. The, the, yeah. the funding makes the, makes something possible. Absolutely. And so my main thing is my hope. I'm trying to basically uh, I've been trying to retire myself from being responsible for this collection, and it hasn't worked very well. Uh, I'm led to believe this is what I'm lobbying for, that they'll hire somebody at, the, who is at least part time, you know, responsible here, sure. and I'll just be here as a volunteer. Well, let's take a pause and what do we have here? Why did we pull out this tree today? Yeah, I have a long history with this. I like it a lot. You know, <clears throat> one, one of the favorites, uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, here in the uh, collection. Uh, yeah. In the early 19... mid, not, I should say early, mid-1960s, yeah. uh, I was 
getting involved in bonsai, reading everything I could get my hands on and mm -hmm. grabbing everything that I could that didn't cost much, you know, to, right. and doing some collecting. And in the edge of a woodlot where I had permission to collect down in uh, the Cleveland Akron area, I was uh, down there because the headquarters for the Davy Tree Expert Company is down there. Okay. And I was um, the horticulture, the, the educated horticulturist and the the Davies Technical Service Department. Okay. All right. And uh, so we were there. I was working for Davy, but I was looking for stuff. And this was I found this in the edge of a woodlot. Yeah. Clearly, where you know nobody would have planted it there. Yeah. And there weren't any other apple trees within sight. Huh. And it was maybe waist high, a little taller than that. Yeah. What? Well, that's an apple tree. <laughs> you know? And it had this interesting move near the base. Real low down, yeah. I, I, I could see that. Well, and that hasn't changed, of course. Yeah. It's never going to be any higher. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> no, might get a little more girth, but not much higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I collected it and I had it uh, in an odd container for a year or two and then eventually in a, in yeah. a bonsai pot. And a pretty interesting tree and one spring after I'd had it about 12 years, I'm going to say, plus okay. or minus. Yeah. It was flowering pretty nicely. And it hadn't, you know, at first there were, there were very few flowers. Very and few. Then, and then they kept, kept getting more and more. Yeah. And so it was, oh, this, this is kind of pretty. You take it up to the Bonsai Society meeting. The yeah. Ann Arbor Bonsai Society is the one I've had the long association with. Yeah. And uh, actually, the longest active member yeah. at, at this point. Yeah. Went up to the Bonsai Society meeting with this. And the form was rather different, kind of. Um, like a, most of the branching was kind of like a candelabra, if you will. Oh, sure. Really sure. Is sort of uh, kind of awkward. And my bonsai friends, Jack, the flowers are nice, but the tree's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> flowers are pretty. <laughs> and, and I, well, you know, I've been hoping, you know, waiting for growth back inside that I could train into some, but it doesn't grow, it just grows out on the, on the branch ends. Okay, yeah. Just goes out on the branch ends, and uh, so I, I don't know what to do, you know, I agree, but, and, and they didn't hesitate a minute, they knew what to do. They said, Jack, you've got to cut off all the branches. Cut off all the branches. You chopped it all. I thought, what, you know, and then, well, you know, I, I knew they were right, of course. So uh, Betty Blake used to ride up to Monsai Society meetings from not too far from here. Betty said, uh, Jack, do uh, you think you could air layer that apple? No, oh, hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut off all the branches anyway. Well, you, sure, might as well try. So, so, so I, I put air layers on the three major yeah. branches. Uh -huh. And so one of those was going up right there, yeah. another one going up right there. Yeah. And there was one coming off right there. Huh, right there, yeah, there right, it is. Right, yeah. right. Can't even and see that. You can barely not, see not, that. Not, not, so, so that's been just some years ago. Yeah. But, but at any rate, you know, to my amazement, in my memory, it, it didn't seem like more than a week or two, there on the trunk, where Wait. there had never been an active bud in my 12 years or so association with, the tree. with, with this, Popped all a of a sudden, here's a bud, and it's swelling rapidly and it's starting to grow. That's amazing. Right, right at the base of the, of, of, the, the, air layer. of the air layer. Yeah. So I had cut off all the inhibiting hormones uh, and all of the carbohydrate yeah. flowing back just beneath the bark stopped right there. Right you there. Know, so it changed its whole attitude you know, <laughs> toward, toward survival. That's right, I got to survive. And, and, and uh, to my amazement, exactly the same thing happened below the, uh, this air layer. And yeah. that was and that, that, that shoot. branch, and, and this right here, yeah. was just the... below that, and, and so the entire top of this, yeah, is was, was regrown, from completely regrown. See, see this section that's maybe four inches long. There? Yep, that that's all that was left after I took off all the air layers. Really, and then, and, and then of course I had new these new shoots that yeah. started out, and yeah. I let them grow. Pretty much uninterrupted, you know, for the year. Okay. Get yeah. as thick as possible. And, right. And then cut them back to, well, you can, most cases you can see about where they got cut back to. Sure, you know, sure. Yeah. And so on. Yeah. Action changes. Very nice. And, and so it's been re 
created. Do you let apples grow every year, or does that take too much energy from the tree that you only let it no, go once uh, in a while? T typically, I've done it every year. Okay. However, we one of our a few years ago, one of our uh, bonsai volunteers here was, you know, he's an older guy. He's helped us, helped us forever, and used the stage where, you know, he couldn't really get focused much on anything. But he'd get his pruner out and he'd mm -hmm. go around and mm -hmm. he'd see something that he thought needed to be snipped, and he'd, he'd snip it. You know? Yeah. And so it was kind of a an issue, but you know, like, okay, then you know, if you're gonna do something, you know, t talk to me, and well, that you know, it didn't make any difference. <laughs> so any, any, anyway, uh, I had uh, had had just super flowering. You yeah. Know? Okay, we're really gonna have a huge apple crop. Yeah. yeah. And then saw all of these spent flowers there, and he wanted to make it nicer, and he clipped them all. He clipped off. them all off. One of the interesting challenges with this, and people, well, people say, what kind of apple is that? Well, it was growing out in the field, you know. It's yeah, not, it's, it's, it's a it's, Michigan it's, apple. It's a hybrid. You know? Yeah. Ohio apple, because I oh. did it, you know. Oh, from where you dug it up. Yeah, yeah where yeah. I dug it up. Um, but the fruit matures really quite early, late August. Oh, predictably, early, early picker, pre yeah. Pre predictably, yeah. and fairly large. And uh, doesn't particularly show here, but often with a, a strong orange blush okay. and soft fruit. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with the yellow transparent apple over here? That any, I, any I've probably what, seen what, one. What, what I, you, and maybe you haven't either, too. Oh, yeah. so, so anyway, it's old-fashioned thing. Okay. Oh, like, okay. Pe people had one, you know, the farmers. Oh, okay. okay. And, and when it was ripe, but, yeah. you know, that was their first apple pie or whatever. Oh, okay. The okay. kind of soft apples. And sure. Huge, sure. big apples. Big apple. So I think that part of the parentage of this is yellow transparent. Is yellow transparent. I'm experimenting with a Marquette grape. Uh, I'm not familiar with it. The University of Minnesota, over the course of the last 50, uh, 60 years, have it has been made breed, breeding grapes. Huh? Breeding grapes to be cold hardy Minnesota grapes that'll grow in our short growing season. And one of them is the Marquette grape. And it's been on the market for several, several years. And uh, I had put a plant in my yard about five years ago or so. And, the Japanese beetles decimate oh, the, the grapes, yep. the, yep. the grape vines in the, in the leaves. So I ended up survive. taking it out of the ground this spring and I put it into a bonsai pot. And I have a trunk that's about this thick, okay. this sure. tall off the ground, and I had two weird branches growing off. And it's like, let's see what happens. Yeah. And yeah. I got a, a branch that's growing right off of the top, like it wants to be a new tree now. And sure. it's already thickened up, it, yep. it grew. Yep. And so I, I, I've just made one summer prune, and there's other two branches growing off to the side, and it just Grapevines always to me look like they're going to die every year. They look like they're like done, and then they shoot up a bud yeah, in the it, strangest yeah, places. It, it's it's, not, and it's not just grapes. That <laughs> well, like not that. only grapes, but, yeah, but, yeah. but I've noticed that with that particular. Mm -hmm. So it's a Marquette grape, so, and so I don't know if I'll see grapes in four or five years. So but. what's the fruit like? Um, it's a dark red grape, very dark red grape. It, it's so, it, dark enough that you don't discern it as red when you... You... You, you, it's 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 so dark. I mean, it's green when it starts, of course. Yeah, but yeah, it's, but, but, but I mean, when it when it ripens. Yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking yeah. of what kind of a show or presentation. Yeah, it would be, it would be a very vibrant purple color, just very mm -hmm. purple um, mm -hmm. on the. On, of course, the leaves are big on a grapevine, but but um, I, I'm a person who just will take anything and, like you said earlier, just a lot of things and experiment. And I'm just learning how things grow. Yeah, at, at at a point we lost it after many years for reasons unknown. But I had mm -hmm. a Virginia creeper, okay, in a pot, in okay, a vine, sure, like a vine with a interesting moves, and yeah, shaggy yeah. bark and yeah, and, and, the barks, and, yeah, and, and oversized leaves, yeah. but just super fall color, of course. Yeah. You know. That's yeah, you know, some, but, some Virginia, of the stuff. Virginia creeper does. Most people who know about Jack Weichel know about the many trees that he grew indoors with grow lights that the rest of us put in cold frames and kept outside the rest of the year, junipers, cotoneasters, pyrocantha, to name a few. He started with outdoor trees, but he now shares how the indoor journey began. By Jack's estimations, he has had some of his indoor trees indoors for almost 40 years. Truly amazing. You know, I, my first thing was outdoor trees. Okay. You know, in fact, uh, you may not have time to really explore that, but and this kind of overgrown with Canada thistles as a result of the COVID, but just up this hillside. Okay. You know, not a walk out there anyway. Yeah. Um, is uh, 
national, international quality dwarf and rare conifer collection. Okay. The man that donated this collection in 1981 to Hidden Lake Gardens here, somebody I knew, his name was Justin Harper, so he was <laughs> ground superintendent or ground supervisor for the headquarters, mm -hmm. uh, international headquarters of the John Deere Company in okay. Moline, Illinois. Okay. Okay. So that was, and he, when his vacation, oh, he'd stop here and we'd look at things and okay. talk about plants. And sure. Actually, he donated uh, yeah. uh, th this collection. So at one point on a trip out west, mm -hmm. you know, coming back, okay, I'd never been to his house in Moline, you know, mm -hmm. to stop in Moline and see Chubb. And mm -hmm. of course, things went down in his basement, and here he had these shop lights sitting there, and he's starting things like marigolds and cabbages and these tomato plants. Yeah. And, oh, Chubb. You got some grow, grow lights, and he said, no, no, you dummy, you don't need grow lights. I've got a bulletin from the USDA that says you don't need grow lights. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the bulletin. You got the bulletin. Just and, 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 but no that, grow but, lights. But, but that, I, I had not done anything or even thought about it because I, you know, okay, you got to have grow lights if you're going to grow something indoors. Yeah, that would be and, people's and, assumption, I would assume. Yeah, uh, well, it was very general. At least that was all I knew. Yeah, yeah. At, at that point, okay, you don't need grow lights. So I had this shop light, you know, four foot. Four foot over, fluorescent light. Yeah, hanging over my, my workbench next to the furnace. And yeah. What the heck, you know, I just let it down there pretty close to the, to the work, workbench and, and brought in a couple of uh, rooted small pyracantha things okay. that I had that, yeah. you know, were, and just, okay, let's just see what happens. And, and that's how it got started. Is that the one that Tim has, one of the pyracanthas I just saw this morning? Uh, no. did, did he get a little tiny pyracantha from yeah, you? That was a different strain. Different, oh, oh, di okay. Di you know the word cultivar? Yeah. Okay, different cultivar. Different cultivar. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very tiny leaves on that one. Yeah, no, that's uh, Teton. Okay, a Teton? Uh, yeah, so that was hybridization work that was done at okay. the National Arboretum. Oh. By, by not by bonsai people, by the plant but, readers. Sure, sure. And so they do work like that, yeah. experiment, and, yeah. and things that have the quality, you know, get, yeah. it, get it patented. patented and, yeah. you know, a lot of this goes on in the plant world. Well, yeah. I've got something really different. Uh, yeah. I give it a name, and uh, I bet I can sell a bunch of Made by some scientists, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. now they're being sold, that's right. You were asking about me getting into growing stuff indoors. Yeah. And so is this thing, okay, uh, you don't have to have grow lights. Yeah. You know, and click, 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 you know, it's like, oh, I've got all these cute little pots. They're too small to keep anything in the live outdoors, but, I, I you know, I bought those. them because I couldn't. And indoors, you wouldn't have the freezes and the wind, the, yeah. the temperature fluctuations. You're not having the... Much, much more controlled environment. Yeah. This would be good use for those little pots. Yeah. And then I can, uh, and I can play bonsai year-round. You know, before I was, uh, you know, spending all my winter, you know, reading stuff and dreaming about Getting ready dreaming. for the next time yeah, you could yeah. work on your tree. Yeah, yeah, my trees. Trees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Plural. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and so, okay, I can, I can grow, I can, intentional pun, I can grow, I can make progress yeah. as a bonsai artist year-round. Year-round, yeah. And so that's what got me rolling in that. Yeah, yeah. And it worked pretty well. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Embarrassingly easy. <laughs> You know, because that's it's, good it, to know. It, it's very uncontrolled. You know? Yeah, it's a very so, controlled, controlled environment. So, where does the whole word or the whole concept, especially with like what 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 piqued my interest when I first heard about this article or this concept, and through you and like who's this Jack guy? Was junipers and what's this? What's this lack of dormancy? Why don't the trees have to go dormant, Jack? I thought they had to go dormant. Do they not have to? You just answered it. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, now, next. Now, now, now listen. Yeah. You know, I have people come to my house, yeah. some from Florida you know, yeah. and other places, right. and, you know, over the years here, and they look, well, that really is a juniper. <laughs> um, and then they, let's go in here, and he's had that 30 years growing indoors, indoors. with no outdoor vacations, mm -hmm. and there's something about human nature, you know, they're walking out. I don't know what's going on, but you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> that goes against all logic. Yeah, yeah. And there's a strong parallel between this and the turfus is a bonsai soil mixed ingredient with uh, Michael Hagedorn. We're yeah, digging yeah. into the soil concept well, here. Well, not, not, we're not going to get very far okay. today. But, <laughs> but Michael has this thing, 
don't use turfers. You know, Michael strongly thing. feels that way. It, it, Mike, Michael strongly feels yeah, that don't. way, and early in his uh, strident <laughs> admonitions, there, a yeah. uh, guy that knew me, you know, and, and my trees, is, well, Jack Michael uses turfers, sure. and and uh, he thinks it's okay. And what Michael's what? response in writing in his blog is, is, Jack Weichel can grow roots on a broomstick. <laughs> but that basically, he, he was saying, you can't do this because you're not Jack Weichel. You're not Jack Weichel. And that doesn't follow f for me, you know. I've been in accused of uh, uh, sorcery and incantation. But it's not... It's basic horticulture. It's not a secret. It's not a touch. I'm not doing anything mm -hmm. that I haven't spelled out in the articles that I've written. Right, right. And uh, well, and 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 uh, one juniper that uh, somebody else now owns since last, you know, since was, since a week and a half ago. Since since a week and a half ago, uh, what was it? We were, I think we were 52 years uh, indoors. Fifty-two years. Without, you know, check check the number. It, yeah. It's up there. Yeah. It, it was. Well, you know, I first it was 1976 when I visited Chubb and first started. So some of my earliest things yeah. went back to 1976. Now, one of my favorite things to say in the workshop I help lead with the Minnesota Bonsai Society is whenever anybody asks a question to us bonsai enthusiasts, those of us in the bonsai world would say. It depends. I asked Jack about that concept. We also dug a little deeper into the discussion of soil and then who we should be listening to when it comes to advice about bonsai. We joke about this as bonsai practitioners. We have in the club, I have with people I talk to, and I do this at the workshops. When I lead the workshops, people will ask a ton of questions. And the first thing out of most of our mouths usually is, well, it depends. Depends upon the tree, depends upon your but, soil, but, depends but, upon but, you, but, depends upon your yard. It depends upon all those things, but the answer is, you know, uh, and what I see that you're publishing there, yeah. you know, there's this sort of a, a, a leaning, a, a suggestion that, okay, your situation is going to be different than yours, and over there, they're a little different, so they're going to have yeah. to do something a little different, and these people over here, uh, in order to do this well, they're, yeah. they're going they're to have to do something, something different, different well. yet. And you I, don't I, buy that? I don't buy it at all. Don't you? I, th I think you've so, come closer to if everybody was using a, a set of best practices yeah. that, that, that it would apply through yeah. basically every climate and, sure. and circumstance. I fancied myself as, uh, as much as there is in the bonsai world, uh, uh, a source of technical information on soil mix. Sure. And I've done a lot of experimenting and yeah. you know I've written some stuff that you go poking around, you may, oh, may I'll be poking. Fi find and uh, and uh, one thing that I found out is that uh, people come and say, Jack, you know, and what's your soil mix? Mm. And then the next time you see them, you know, Jack, I should have written that down, you know. Tell me again what your soil mix is. I lost the note, Jack. <laughs> 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 and, 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 and I began thinking, you know, if I had a secret soil mix, People be hanging on every word. Yeah, and it worked pretty well, you know. I said, yeah. "Okay, this is my secret mix. Uh, don't tell anybody, but uh, but make sure you say it's Jack's secret." <laughs> <laughs> if I had absolutely the superior soil mix, the the, the equivalent of Akadama, you know, which is a very unique and interesting stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and if I I had this, I mean publish my insight there. Mm -hmm. Most people in the bonsai world wouldn't be using. There's a certain thing, the personality. Mm -hmm. You ask for my recipe for spaghetti, yeah. and before you ever try it, you fix it, you know. Mm -hmm. You have to put your stamp gonna, on gonna it. You're going to tweak it a little bit to you make it. you got to tweak it. You know, yeah. I, I think this would be better if it had something else in it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe the different proportions might sure. be better. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then, well, Joe over here is doing something different. Michael yeah. Hagedorn says you can't you do can't this. You can't do it. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, one one of the big issues to me in the whole bonsai world right now is yeah. I was lucky that I got started when I did because mm -hmm. you could read everything written in English in a few weekends, you know. Right, right. 
<laughs> but but it no. was but it was stuff that people had thought about, mm -hmm. you know, to get it in print. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't just mm -hmm. uh, well-intentioned conjecture. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm a firm believer that a lot of what you and I know today isn't true. Problem is, we don't know that it's just which parts it's not is. true and which part of it's not true. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's a it's a big it, to me. It's a big impediment to progress in the bonsai world yeah. is that there's so much stuff out there, mm -hmm. and that if people like you were, were spending uh, more time with uh, some ser seriously well constructed and you know documentable yeah. Yeah. information, right, um, a lot more people would be having success. Trees are survivors, you know. They're, pro mm -hmm. they're like you and I. They're the offspring of survivors. Yeah, you know. So. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's been healthy, you know, it's going to get healthy and healthier if you treat yeah. it right. Right. And if it's weak, why well, then, you know, there's that cycle. It's going to get weaker and weaker. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't change much. But. I heard someone say once, you know, listen to everything everybody has to say about bonsai. And then the, the next phrase was don't listen to anything anybody's saying about bonsai. And so well, how do you, well, how do you parse well, that no, out? No, what, what I say is listen to everything. Try to understand what they're saying. What they're saying. And, and then... Watch your trees and see if your observations support that. The claim or whatever, yeah, the method yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah, you're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look yeah. for evidence of yeah. that. Yeah, and your Living, tree will grow, tell you. Growing evidence, yeah. Yeah, your tree's going to tell so, you. So, you know, it's not going to happen for a variety of reasons, but yeah. I think it will eventually. Sure. That there will be some serious scientific, yeah. with controlled experiments and replication of treatments, uh -huh. you know. Uh, yeah. uh, research done on stuff related to growing bone side. Mm -hmm. Ah, the soil debate. That one will go on forever and a day, right? Until those studies come through, like replicated studies, peer-reviewed, ah, the soil debate. My thanks to Jack Weichel for uh, letting me come to Tipton and sit in his beautiful uh, gardens there um, on a very hot summer day. Uh, I was doing a little bit sweating there, but we had such a good time. I, it was so amazing. Part two is coming up on my next episode. In the meantime, don't be afraid to check out Michigan Bonsai, right? There's all kinds of links down in the uh, description here talking about the different gardens you can go to as you go through Michigan and uh, uh, more information about Jack Weichel. And uh, I also met Tim Cox uh, through that trip. So uh, check out those links. And part two is coming up uh, very, very shortly. So, hey, that's going to do it for part one. Take care of you. Take care of your Bonsai. And we'll catch you very soon, probably talking to Jack on the next one.